Coming up, the nominal launch of the Antares rocket. Grasshopper makes a nominal jump of 250 meters. And the wraps come off Atlantis in a nominal removal ceremony. All that plus a live interview of Doug Messier from Parabolic Arts. Stay tuned, Space Vidcast is nominal. Welcome to Space Vidcast episode 6.12 for Saturday, April 27th, 2013. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me as always, the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. But before we get into the uh, nominal launch of Orbital's Antares vehicle, um, I did want to do a little bit of housekeeping, if I may. And that is, uh, first, uh, this post, let's go, I'm going to, ready, ready? We're going to go over the other camera slowly, and bam, just like that. So uh, this is a framed version of the poster. You can buy this. We'll add this into the show notes. This is um, uh, Climbers wanted, uh, wanted. So this is the top of Mount Everest. This is the top of Olympus Mons right up there. Uh, so it kind of gives you a difference in the height. And uh, as of today, uh, we are going to make this available for free download on spacevacast.com. So you can get a 11 by 17, I think, version of this on spacevacast.com. And in about a week, we'll make it so that you can edit the text. So if you want to change that into whatever language you want to put that in. The idea being, if you want the high quality print to frame, awesome. Buy it right from the author. We, we don't get any kickback from it. But if you want to post these around town, get people excited about space and kind of thinking about some of these things, um, that would be cool too. So uh, that will be available a little bit later on today. Um, and then I also wanted to thank Woe Jeffrey for uh, helping out with our uh, uh, web server to make it actually much more nice and stable. So a little uh, thank you up front in the show Aww. for that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started straight on with some space news. Uh, first, uh, Orbital Sciences did launch their Antares test vehicle, uh, and uh, we have some launch footage of Ooh. that. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek. Point of reference, the space station is 262 miles up north of the Michigan Peninsula at the time of launch. Four, three, go Antares. One. Have ignition. Attention start. Lift off of the Antares A1 test mission from the Mars at Zero A at the Wallace Flight Facility. If you see nominal, attitude nominal. Power is nominal. Engines at 108% and nominal. Attitude nominal. Core pressures are nominal. Up to 2,000 feet. Plus 30 seconds. TPC nominal. Engines at 104 and nominal. Attitude nominal. TPC is skewing out in preparation for the MECO event. Standing by for stage one MECO and separation. MECO. ESS is disabled. We have stage one separation. Lower ACS is enabled. Closed loop guidance is enabled. Four minutes, 20 seconds uh, into the flight. All as you hear going very smoothly. 327 second sequence of time. Kyle, the next mark event will be fairing separation. Antares is now in a coast phase until proper conditions for fairing separation and stage two ignition are achieved. Power is nominal. Fairing separation. Interstage separation. Attitude nominal. Standing by for stage two ignition. Stage two ignition. It will separation. Kyle, as you can see on the animation, <laughs> the payload has separated successfully. So, very nominal flight from uh, Orbital Sciences. <laughs> they did... So, the previous nominal king was SpaceX, uh, in meaning that um, SpaceX used the highest number of the highest number of the use of the term nominal in any launch coverage we had ever seen. In fact, we went back into our archives and looked it up. 
SpaceX's record was 31 nominals, or once every 23 seconds. That was on Falcon 9 Flight yeah. 2, or so, about 20, once every, on average, once every 23 seconds. Uh, we, we couldn't help but notice that Orbital really wanted to one-up SpaceX on the nominal count, and uh, they were using nominal uh, quite often. In fact, it was one call every seven seconds. Uh, we yeah. put together a little tribute video uh, for the nominal calls, just, just, you know what? You're welcome, Internet. Here you go. If you see nominal, do nominal, is nominal, and nominal, do nominal, 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 and nominal, do nominal, 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 do nominal, 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 engines remain nominal, nominal, do nominal, nominal, and nominal, 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 nominal. Nominal. Engines remain nominal. 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 They're nominal. Engines are nominal. 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 And nominal. 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 All systems remain nominal. Is nominal. 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 Nominally. Nominal. 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 And nominal. Nominal. Nominal, nominal, is nominal, 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 is nominal, nominal, and Terry's performance is nominal, 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 and nominal, 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 is nominal, and Terry's has delivered the A1 test mission payload into orbit. 93 nominal counts. 90. The previous record reminding you, 31. Orbital smash that ball out of the park. Now, um, as a joke before, we had said that uh, nominal should be a drinking game. Uh, that is dangerous at this point. So no longer is the, the nominal drinking game is off the table. It reminds me, like, uh, I forget what, what sketch, uh, who did it, but there's a sketch where a bunch of different doctors meet each other. And it's like, like doctor, 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 doctor. doctor, doctor. Yeah. And eventually it actually starts to sound like he's asking a question in some of them and then responding to himself. <laughs> nominal, 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 nominal. Joking aside, congratulations to Orbital. Uh, launching a next generation rocket is uh, no small feat. That is America's newest rocket that you just saw launch uh, from the uh, Wallops Mars pad. And can I say really amazing camera shots? Yeah, I like the shots. You know, the fairing. Yeah, yeah. Oh they look my nice. goodness. Look really Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely gorgeous. They also gorgeous. launched some phone sets. We'll just touch on this briefly. Uh, part of their payload was some phone sets. Uh, the neat thing about a phone set is a phone, a cell phone. I don't have one handy. I should have had one over here. <laughs> a cell phone has most of the things that you need for satellite guidance. So you got a bunch of little itty bitty sensors on it. They're mm -hmm. inexpensive. Uh, the only problem is they're not really hardened against radiation. So right. the downside of a phone set is they don't last very long. Mm -hmm. But, you know, who cares? Now you've got this really low-cost satellite that you can put up there and do some basic research. And so there was a phone set payload that was delivered uh, with that as well. A couple of them. Uh, one mm -hmm. gram, one bell. They're about four inches by four inches. They're about, I think it was like two and a half pounds, something silly like that. Uh, so very, very tiny. And they are sending a packet pictures back. You can go to phonesat.org and uh, and check out all of the different pictures that they're sending back, which is really, really cool. Uh, so while Orbital may have taken SpaceX's nominal crown, uh, SpaceX has moved on and they're now trying to actually launch Grasshopper to higher and higher heights. This is a video of Grasshopper's 250 meter hover. Check it out.
and stuck the landing! Dude, that is epic, and if they can make that work, that is the future of space flight you're watching happen right there. And well, again, with the camera shots. I know that... You know, I know that quadcopter <laughs> is awesome. Just <laughs> all over that place. That I love that crazy. shot. I absolutely love that, that shot. All right, um, and before we go into break, uh, my favorite space shuttle, my favorite orbiter is Atlantis, OV-104. And um, all the orbiters have retired, and they are now in their homes... Uh, in their museums. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the museums are building custom structures around them. The custom structure around Atlantis down at Kennedy Space Center, they basically finished that up and they're taking the wraps off Atlantis. So they actually wrapped Atlantis up. This is what she looked like beforehand. And they started uh, pulling it apart. So there you can see there's the, you, yep, you get taking you the wrapping off of Atlantis. And uh, yeah, so now you can see the uh, the nose and some of the front uh, orbital maneuvering systems. And I just want to be, you know, it's, Atlantis is in I this particular, that yeah, is, that's amazing, is in this position because that's the way she's going to be presented. And yeah, so you can get a good feel. when you feel. walk into the visitor center, she's supposed to look like she's out in space on a mission. They're going to yeah. open up the payload bay doors. Um, they uh, So you'll be able to walk all the way around the orbiter and, and kind of get a close-up look at it that way. Um, at, at that cockeyed angle. At that crazy so you angle. Go back, can, you, can you find that shot, uh, the one that I said looked really good? It's kind of mostly black. Uh, yes, yeah, it's forward. Actually, that shot's fine. Uh, go backwards a shot and go back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's awkward, like, what is he talking about? So you can see the orbiter kind of at that angle. You can see the walkway and that whole backstretch. I mean, it's so close. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you can't actually touch it, but it, it looks like it's close enough that you could reach out and touch mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? Um, really, really awesome. Uh, and all the orbiters in their uh, home positions are, are going to be in different uh, configuration. This is going to be like it's flying in space. That yeah, shot right that's there. That's what I'm saying. So I, I believe, if I understand where the screens are going correctly, that kind of black spot behind it, that's all going to be like floor to ceiling ginormous video wall. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a video of the Earth as if Atlantis is in space. Is in orbit. So yeah. imagine for a moment, already at that kind of angled shot, mm -hmm. plus a, a curvature of the Earth kind of shot in the background. Amazing. And you're going to be able to walk up over and around it. And they're going to open the payload bay doors as well. So it's mm -hmm. going to be just like as, as if it were out there. And that's no small feat. Keep in mind, the hinges on the payload bay doors were designed to be opened in space, not on Earth. Right. So they, not it's to gonna sustain take them, that kind of weight all the time. It's going to take them a couple of weeks before they're going to be able to uh, actually get those fully opened. And then they've got some support uh, systems they're putting in from the ceiling. So I'm super excited for that. That'll be at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, that'll be at the Visitor Center for the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, and it's really coming along. I think they're opening it this year, aren't they? I, I I mean, they so. look like they're pretty far along with that. And, and that's with the work lights, by the way. Yeah. Imagine what it will look like with the theatrical it's lights. Dark and the, and, oh, oh, yeah. So cool. I'm super excited for that. I'm actually excited for all of them, right? That's in the space configuration. Mm -hmm. Endeavor is in launch. So yep. she'll have the um, solid rocket boosters and the external tank, like, fully upright. And then... Um, Discovery is at wheel stop. It will, yeah, boring. Okay, on that note, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, Douglas Messier of Parabolic Arc. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The moon was man's first outpost, a first footstep in space. From the moon, we were able to look back at Earth and see ourselves. See ourselves from a different perspective, a sight that revealed a profound truth. The heavens are part of man's world. From this moment forward, the curve of evolution was bent. The perilous voyage into space was a challenge we were willing to accept and unwilling to postpone. The future of our species was now as much in space as it was on Earth. Forty-four years later, we are approaching the dawn of a new era one that is characterized not by rovers and probes, visits or short stays, but by permanence. Mars. From now on, we won't just be visiting planets. We'll be staying.
you will be staying. In our pursuit to find life elsewhere in the universe, the search for life on Mars begins on Earth. And welcome back. We are joined now with Doug Messier of Parabolic Arc up in Mojave, which we lovingly call Mojave because it's with a J and not an H. And if you screw that up, they yeah. will they will get to you on Twitter. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Doug, we don't really talk about Mojave a whole lot uh, on the show. Tell me a little bit about what's going on up in Mojave because there's a lot of stuff happening up there. Oh, yeah, there's uh, quite a bit, and uh, great to be back on the show. Good to be talking to you guys again. Uh, there's uh, Virgin Galactic is up here, along with uh, Scale Composites and the Spaceship Company, and you kind of know what they're working on. It's uh, Spaceship 2 and White Knight 2, and you've got X-Core. Uh, they're beginning to assemble the Lynx this year and hope to be flying it uh, by the end of the year. Mass and Space Systems is here, and they've been flying their uh, vehicles, um, kind of uh, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles and I've seen some of those flights they're pretty cool to see and um, inner orbital is working on a system you also have uh, strata launch which just finished its two buildings um, there's a production facility and there's also a massive hangar and if you look at the hangar there's a 747 uh, in front of it and it looks very tiny compared to the outline of the doors for this thing and uh, it's the reason I call it Birdzilla. It's just going to be a massive aircraft. So there's all sorts of stuff going on up here. And why, what do you think it is that attracts people to Mojave, or at least rocket scientists? You, you have a bunch there, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, the thing, it's a good place to test. Uh, it's, it's fairly remote. The neighbors don't complain too much. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, you're you're in a place where you get sonic booms from Edwards just about every day, so people are used to the noise, the few people who live up here. And um, it's also a good environment for, um, there's a lot of aerospace capability out here. I live across the street from a guy who, who builds parts for companies like X-Core and, um, and Virgin Galactic, and he, um, you know, it's just... He does that out of his residence, so it, there's a big support network up here, and it's uh, it's great. And it all started with uh, the uh, uh, it all started with the uh, uh, vertical takeoff and landing uh, craft that's now sitting outside of the administration building. So it's uh, out of that came four companies that are uh, that are pursuing space in different ways. So it's a good place. Um, it's not. It's remote enough to be good for testing, but you're close enough to LA that you can get down there, and close enough to civilization that you can go off on the weekends. We were there so not that not long too... ago, and it really is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I mean, yeah. you just keep going and going and going, and then you get to a point where, for whatever reason, you hit these wind shears, and then you keep going into <laughs> the wind shears, and then you're in Mojave, yeah. which seems like a terrible place yeah. to test a vertical takeoff, vertical landing vehicle, or maybe a great one because you got all those wind shears. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely interesting. And we had a couple weeks ago, we had seventy mile, seventy five mile an hour winds, and it it damaged a, a solar array at the airport. And last year we had winds up to about 88 miles an hour for, you know, and that, that was a two-day dust storm. And when the dust, uh, when the storms get up, the winds get up up here, it's just, it takes all the stuff from the dry lake beds that are there and puts it into the sky. And uh, during the 75 mile an hour winds two weeks ago, we had uh, the highway closed. On, on the going one direction, you had like a 16 car pileup, and then the other, both directions were not were closed down because it, you couldn't see anything. 
So people are up here in Mojave trying to figure out how to get back down to Lancaster and Palmdale um, with all the all the roads closed. So it's interesting. And then just to the west of here, you have mountains, and when it it will snow up in those mountains, and you'll have a 50 mile stretch of highway that's closed down, and then you'll have trucks and cars backed up for miles until they open up the pass. So it's a pretty wild place, and uh, occasionally you get uh, snow actually down on the, the desert floor, and that's that's always interesting. So in this you crazy know, place, this is where new space companies are testing their next generation vehicles. Yeah. Uh, scale yeah. is based out of there, like you mentioned, um, uh, but more importantly, the spaceship company in Virgin Galactic, all part right. of the same team now at this point, um, and they're doing something Monday morning, is that correct? Um, yeah, I think so. What, what are they doing? <laughs> um, I remember. Oh, first powered flight is supposed to be on Monday, uh, pretty early Monday morning, and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, they're going to light up. They're going to apparently they fixed their problems and they're going to light the candle on this thing. Um, we're expecting. Uh, my guess is it's going to be a pretty short burn, maybe five or ten seconds and and they're hoping to get to uh, through to the supersonic barrier so uh, that that should be exciting to see it's it's scheduled for Monday morning if they have a slip it looks like they've reserved time on Tuesday uh, based on the the no tams I've been seeing there's notice to airmen on the FAA site and it kind of lays out the timing of all this stuff so talk to me a little so it's bit really about, interesting talk to me a little bit about the vehicle right because you'd mentioned that there were slips and there were some issues uh, what do you know about those right so uh, Virgin Galactic has been trying to fly for years they have been flying they've been doing uh, drop tests for quite a while so what what's so important about this this next test on Monday well the test on Monday is the first time they fly under power right now they go up to about 51,000 feet and drop and they they do tests on, on gliding, this will be actual powered flight. It's the first step toward uh, getting into space. Now their schedule is to do a initial burn on Monday and then um, a series of tests over the next uh, six to eight months. And hopefully uh, they will be burning that engine longer and longer and until they can, can get into space, hopefully by the end of the year. And then both uh, Richard Branson and, and George Whitesides has been have been saying um, that they're they're looking to get into space, uh, you know, early next year, first quarter next year. Now the issue with the engine, um, it's been a tough uh, nut to crack because um, they they went with an upgraded hybrid engine of of what they'd used on Spaceship One, and Spaceship Two is about three times larger. Spaceship One had a capacity of three people in a small cockpit. Uh, Spaceship Two is about three times bigger. It's got six people uh, back in the passenger area and two pilots up front. Um, the carrier aircraft is, is subsequently sized larger. So scaling up that hybrid's been an issue for them. And it, it really bit them in 19 or 2007 when they had an explosion during a cold flow of nitrous oxide. That explosion ended up killing three people and, and injuring three others. So they've been trying to get the engine to work. They've been um, working on making sure that the nitrous tank, which is a big tank right behind the uh, passenger area, is, is safe. And, and they only installed that in Spaceship Two um, not too long ago, a few months ago. So um, it's it's been a slow process for them, and, and one of the issues that you had with that is that you, you ended up building the spaceship before you really had the engine figured out. And um, usually you do that the opposite way, and, and you build the spaceship around the engine, but it was done kind of backwards in this case, at least according to people I talked to. That's what Bert Rutan wanted. He's got his vehicle. Yeah. He's going to build it my way, gosh darn it. <laughs> well, from what I've what I've heard from people here is that they they didn't. Bert looked at uh, liquid fueled engines and thought they were too complicated and didn't like all the pipes and the valves and stuff. So, um, so that kind of prevented them from from pursuing the liquid propulsion. Although they are pursuing liquid propulsion as part of uh, the Launcher One program, which is to, to launch small satellites from a from a rocket that they would airdrop in place of the spaceship too. They're also involved in the ALASA program, which is an Air Force, um, or it's either Air Force or DARPA project in which they're trying to get a, 
uh, small payloads up in space very cheaply through air launch. So there are um, there are liquid engine tests uh, going on that uh, Virgin is pursuing out in the test area of Mojave. So also in Mojave is XCore. At least they're still kind of in Mojave, right? I know that they're talking about moving to Texas. Are they moving everything to Texas? Have they moved? How, what's XCore look like? Um, XCore is up at about 50 people or more right now. Um, latest number I heard. Um, they're still all here. Their plan is to uh, fly the in, uh, fly the vehicle first before moving on to Texas. They also uh, have to wait for uh, the uh, Midland uh, Airport to get a spaceport license. The Midland Airport's working on that. Uh, it's not clear when that's going to happen. It, you know, it's an FAA process. Um, so I think their plan is to move the R&D out to Midland um, probably after they get the, uh, the ship flying. Uh, and then uh, they want to continue to operate some Lynxes out of the uh, out of Mojave, but I, I think it'll be a pretty small uh, group that would do that. So Most of the company would be in Midland. Talk about the Lynx, right? Because you've got um, you've got Virgin Galactic with Spaceship Two, White Knight Two, uh, two hundred thousand dollars per seat gets you five minutes in space. But then you've also got for half the price at a hundred thousand dollars a seat, the Lynx. So what can you tell us about right. Lynx? Uh, Lynx is uh, coming along on the on the floor they're building it right now they've got the fuselage there and and the different uh parts of that are are being built at different vendors across the country including the um including the cockpit and the wings and the strakes and 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 different parts of that so i got a i got a tour last week of the uh drink playing crazy saturday last week of the the hangar and uh, along with some friends who were in town and um so it's it's coming along um a Jeff Grayson and, and Doug Jones have said they're they're expecting to do the first runway hops in about six months from now. Uh, they were hoping to get it done by the end of get those done by the end of last year in the first quarter of this year. It's just uh, taking uh, much longer than uh, they thought to to get all these parts done and, and get them assembled in, in Mojave. So it's it's coming along not as not as quickly as they'd hoped, but uh, hoping to see that by the end of the year. That seems to be the mantra of new space, not as quickly as we hoped. Always delayed. Yeah, 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 that's true. Everything takes longer than you think, and you, you run into issues that you don't anticipate. It is but the uh, they had a, during a Plain Crazy Saturday, they had a, a full-scale mock-up out on the uh, tarmac, and, and people were, you know, sitting in it and uh, taking pictures and stuff like that. It's, it's, a, it's a neat machine. And basically it's a right stuff sort of approach to things. You'll be right there in the cockpit with the, with the pilot who is Rick Searfoss. And, um, you know, that should be fun. You know, it's a, it's a $95,000 uh, ride as opposed to 200 grand, but it's just a different experience. And uh, I think both experiences would be fun. I think both the Virgin and the, the Lynx experience would be fun in different ways. If I had three hundred thousand dollars, I would do both of them. Yeah, <laughs> and you get to uh, you get to wear a, a spacesuit in the Lynx, which is really cool to put on. I, I got a they had a company come in last year in July, and um, they tried on everybody everybody in the company tried on a, a suit and went to the Lynx mock up and uh, and tried that on, and you, you really feel you know you put that suit on, it's cool. It, it was the most happy I've ever seen anybody at x -Corp. <laughs> <laughs> They were just like, we're in this suit and, you know, you get the helmet on and, you know, somebody's following you with an air conditioning kind of unit and <laughs> for this vest that you have, you have this so uh, vest with water running through it and it's, it's got an external air conditioning kind of system on it that somebody's kind of following you along with and, uh, it was kind of cool when I, I was one of the last people to do that and I got to sit in the cockpit with Rick Surfoss and he's he's going over engineering things with all the with a couple of the explore X Corps employees and they were, you know, we need to switch here and want this over there and, and stuff like that. And it was just kind of cool to just sit there and listen to it. So well, Doug, there is a ton of stuff happening in Mojave. It's basically the heart of the new space industry with the exception of SpaceX. Uh, but SpaceX is right. right down right down the road in LA, right? So it's it's all kind of right, right. there, and uh, so for that uh, we're going to try to bring you back uh, week after week for what we're kind of internally calling the Mojave Minute, 
just for a quick little little itty bitty update, not a full 10 minute segment, but just a little here's what's happening in Mojave this week um, so that we can keep our finger on the pulse of new space um, because you're right there. Absolutely. In the so, yeah, that'd be fun. And now you I'd also write that. for Parabolic Arc, so uh, uh, do a quick plug right. for Parabolic Arc as well. Well, Parabolic Arc is a website that covers uh, all the new space activities and also some global news and, and NASA news. It's parabolicarc.com, and it's updated daily. And if you go on the site right now, you've got all the latest news on the Spaceship 2 uh, uh, activities that are going to be taking place on Monday. And definitely go and uh, t check it out. Awesome. So uh, for real-time awesome. updates on the uh, uh uh, firing of Spaceship Two, the parabolicarc.com. Doug, thank you so much for taking the time out of your Saturday well, to join us and yeah, give us an update no as to everything okay. going on. Can I put in a plug for my uh, Twitter feed? Heck yeah! Yeah, it's at spacecom, uh, space, uh, and then com, and I will be tweeting early Monday morning and um, letting you know what's going on out here. Awesome. All right, Doug, All thank right. you so much for joining us. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, comments from last week's show. Stay with us. Look into her face, determination in her eyes. She won't give up or quit or fumble little fashion lies. Films on some expectation. This girl's a fascination. And uh, welcome back. I was in no way doing a nerdy white boy dance during that last break. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> like that. All right, uh, let's talk about some comments from last week's show. Uh, the first one comes from Zen Karu, I guess. Uh, <laughs> th this is in regards to um, um, International Space Station Commander uh, Chris Hadfield. Mm -hmm. And he said, the entire time the commander was talking, all I was doing was watching his watch float around his arm. I was too. It was weird, right? He'd move and the watch would just kind of move up and down his arm in this kind of like weird, I don't know. Wait, I'm I sorry. So the commander did a video. Was this the washcloth one? I think this was the the tears. This oh, was the tears. tears? Yeah, okay. He, There's another one with, that's a washcloth one, but same kind of thing. But I figured that was the one because of the hands, like close mm -hmm. up on the hands. Uh, but anyway, so he does this, this really interesting, yeah. and that was a little creepy, video mm -hmm. about... Tears in space, mm -hmm. and you're watching his watch. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Try it next time you see one of Hatfield's uh, videos. There's something in space for everyone. There's something in space for <laughs> everyone. Uh, next comment comes from Blaze Sanders, the CTO of Solar System Express. He says, Solar System Express is entering the Do It Yourself rocket contest with an aerospike engine for use in altitude control for the Google Lunar X Prize teams, a space skydiving suit, and ballooned launched rockets. And the whole reason we added that in was because we thought that was really freaking cool and wanted to just give you a little bit of free uh, publicity and heads up. So, uh, more information that's Solar System Express or Sol X. Like that. Like yeah, that. That was pretty really cool. Uh, yeah, and that actually <laughs> brings up an interesting point of some of the engines and technology being used don't just go on spacecraft necessarily, right. they can go on space suits, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're. Which, as we've said, are like personal spacecraft. They are like per personal spacecraft. So that's the hand movement that goes with that. Personal spacecraft. Um, let's see here. What else we got? From Mini Elon, currently in the chat room, mm -hmm. says, If the NASA asteroid capture mission was to go wrong, what would the response to stopping the asteroid from impacting the Earth be? I'll be in the chat room if you'd like to ask my... Hey, now, I see what you did there. You conned <laughs> us into using your question, and it worked. Uh, to answer your question, actually, uh, the asteroid will not be of any size that would be of any danger to Earth whatsoever. If it did go out of control, go ballistic, and head right for it, it's coming right for us! Uh, That's what we have break. Bruce Willis for. Yeah, you, we'll have Bruce Willis. They'll, they're going to launch up there. They're going to they're gonna drill into it, put a nuke in there. Right. 
And then blow it up. Right. That's, I think, the backup plan. Well, Either we already that have or historical renderings showing us how to do it. We do, we do. We have yeah. a pretty good plan as so to how that will work. That. Or, or uh, in reality, it's just so small that it's going to break up in our atmosphere, and it's yeah. it's a non. It'll be a non event. You probably won't even notice it or hear it or see it. Unless uh, it breaks up over Russia. And then you probably then it, still won't notice it, hear it, or oh, see it at that point. Right, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Never fortunately, no. Try. Yeah, not really. Okay. Um, and finally, this is from Lee Russell, and that is the do-it-yourself rocket engine project is a seriously cool way to look at space and rocket design. How far will open source design push space exploration costs down? Will it speed up the ability of small startup companies to overcome some of the huge initial hurdles of getting into space? And I don't know, but I totally agree, right? <laughs> It's this but is, I don't know. I don't know. It's this is the exciting thing about the DIY rocket contest mm -hmm. is that it can help radically push down the cost barrier of going into space. Totally. And you look at you know it used to kind of be that the internet was the billionaire's playground. Everyone wanted to make a new dot com, and right. that was where blah blah blah. And we had the big bubble. You but now it. it seems like we're sliding back into hardware design. Right. The kind of the Kickstarter projects, right? right. The yeah. things that you can actually build and do and touch. Yep. And like manufacturing is it but space manufacturing is still freakishly expensive mm -hmm. uh, as compared to other manufacturing right and i think a lot of these uh, startup guys you know are like oh let's do something in space we love space and then they start looking at what it actually takes to do with the actual rocket science mm -hmm. behind it and go or you know let's not just kidding. do that but what if you had a pre created 3d rocket engine that you could just print out and p make part of your spacesuit or your vehicle or your yes very cool. I think, like I said, radically changing. Super bubbly excited right here, right now. That's why I'm so excited about that yeah. stuff. So I think that's a really exciting, awesome, and cool contest. What? Did I miss one? Yep. Oh, did I screw up Dada by missing one? You did. Oh. It's okay. There it is. Oops. Oh, it's not on the screen anymore. It was there. There it is. There it is. Okay. Orion Dynasty asks, it's ironic that I skipped this one. Of I know! all of them to skip, it's really ironic that I, I skipped this one, which is. Where can I get those cool stickers for my laptop? Um, actually, they are cool stickers, right? So see this? Hang on. They're actually, if I turn down the brightness on my screen, you can actually see that they're cut out to show through. I don't know if I've told, I know I've told the story in After Dark before, but I'll, I'll tell it on, on the air again. I have always hated showing computer logos on on here, right? I do not like doing that. Yes, for those of you who watched us throughout the years, you've noticed that we cover up the logos in a very different ways. In many uh, different ways. Many different ways. Throughout the years, I have tried to cover the logos, and I've never found one that I like. This is one that I like. And actually, if you watch previous shows before we had these on there, whenever we'd go to this shot, you'd see us do this so that you wouldn't have the logo. And then when he cut over to the other shot, which he's not prepared to do. There we go. <laughs> I, would, I would try to kind of like do this to minimize the logo, like, or whatever I could yeah. to get it off the screen because I can't, there's no way I can get my computer out of the shot. Uh -huh. So, our director, uh, Tim, who we lovingly call Dutta, um, and his, his uh, Twitter handle is underscore Dutta underscore D U T A. D U T A. He, uh, he made these for us. Yeah. This is a laser engraved uh, thingamabobber. Uh, that's a technical term. Logo yep. mm -hmm. that is shining through where the other um, other, old, logo, would other be. logo would normally be, and the rest of it is completely opaque. And um, he he presented these to us at Yuri's Night 2013 um, as we're setting up, and uh, it was kind of amazing to watch because he closes the computer, right? He closes it up. He takes the thing out. He does like he has this squeegee thing, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. takes a razor blade, goes. Whoa, whoa, Foo, foo, foo. 60 seconds later, bubble free, perfectly lined up, perfectly flat and custom cut to my laptop. And I was FYI, like, wow. Did not know Dada was a ninja. Also, our director is a ninja. Sticker ninja. Sticker ninja. So the answer is, to answer your question, so that's the sticker, that's the story behind the sticker, that's yeah. why we have the sticker. Yeah. And we made exactly two of them. One right here, one right there. Yeah. None other exist on the planet, unfortunately. <laughs> And while I would love to make these available because I think this is really freaking cool. Ben says, unfortunately, he doesn't mean it. I do. No, I'd love, yeah. I think this is awesome. I'd love to give. You don't really mean it. No, I want to give everyone the ability to do this, right? If yeah. we could have a bunch of laptops that had the Space Vidcast emblem glowing instead of the Apple emblem glowing or whatever you've got, yeah. how cool would that be? Well, I would yeah. love that. Yeah. The problem is, we our, can't director send is data to everybody. our director is a ninja. And unless you have ninja skills, I don't know that you're actually going to be able to get this because it wasn't like he just kind of placed it on and did. He 
he clearly knew what he was doing and how to make this go. And it's definitely and no not offense putting, to like, you, but you don't. It's not like putting an iPhone cover on your phone, right? No. Or like one of those screen protectors. It's not like that. And I know, I know a lot of you have screwed those up. <laughs> I know. So yeah. it's it's not like that at all. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's not going to happen. All right. Yeah. That's our show. Um, once again, reminder, bam, you can download these now. Yeah, that just happened. Hang on. I'm just... Yeah. You can download yeah, these now. Go. They're perfect. Thank you. You can download those now, although it's glaring. I just there you go. Um, I, I love these posters. I think they're really, really, really awesome. They're kind of inspirational. Uh, so you can get this for free. You don't have to buy the uh, high quality version. If you do opt to buy the high quality version, which is this one, it doesn't come without it doesn't come with the frame. Um, but you can get some really, really cheap on Amazon. Oh, seven dollar frame on Amazon. It's really a terrible cheap. frame, but it works perfect, right? And uh, it's just, it's just really cool. And we'll post the text of this as well. It's just, it's just a neat thing that kind of makes you stop, and then when you kind of read it, you go, "Huh," and that's, uh, that's cool. So this is the first in the series, and we're hoping to have one out every two or three months or so. So on that note, we'd like to thank everyone so much for watching. If you'd like to continue watching, you're on on demand. Space Vidcast After Dark is available for Space Vidcast Epic subscribers. That is a lot of saying Space Vidcast back to back, isn't it? Yeah. Space Vidcast is a program that we have that allows you to pay us, give you your hard-earned money, and then we take your hard-earned money and continue to produce this show. That's how that works. What's the show? The show Space Vidcast. Space Vidcast. Exactly. Okay. It's nominal. Nominal. And uh, so Space Big Guest Epic starts at $10 a month or $100 a year, and every penny of that goes back into the show, goes into equipment, it goes into doing things like making cool posters, making graphics, making the show better and better and better. So without you, your Epic subscriptions, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Uh, every single subscription helps and counts, and I do want to currently thank every single Epic subscriber that we have today. Um, your, your subscription to Epic uh, helps us continue to produce the show. So uh, go to spacefigcast.com slash Epic. You'll get, a, um, you'll get an account username and password, and that will give you access to gigs and gigs and gigs of additional content only available to Space Vidcast Epic sus subscribers. For example, Space Vidcast After Dark, which if you're watching on demand is the only way to see Space Vidcast After Dark. However, if you're watching live, you can watch After Dark for free. It's up next. Stay tuned. That starts now. And goodbye. Thank you.